Good afternoon and welcome to Carolina News. I'm Lindsay Thorpe. And I'm Elena Barilla. Our top story today, carbon monoxide is often called the silent killer. Reporter Calista Brown tells us about one Hollywood star's close call with the dangerous gas and learned what you can do to keep you and your family safe. It's odorless, it's clear, and most people wouldn't, you know, are not acute enough to pick up the symptoms. North Tahoe Fire Chief Michael Schwartz warns people about the dangers of carbon monoxide poisoning. This comes after actress Anna Ferris, famous for her roles in the movie House Bunny and TV show Mom, along with her family, had a close call with carbon monoxide at their vacation rental. Down in the lower areas of the house, it was 426. That's like a very, very high level. Short says people could die within minutes with levels of carbon monoxide that high. That's why it's so important to have carbon monoxide detectors. And here in Columbia, John Johnson from Southern Heating and Air says that you should have carbon monoxide detectors in your home, but you should also have them when you travel. Because I'm actually fixing to travel to Dallas, and one of the things we're going to pack is a carbon monoxide detector. Uh, you can take it and you can plug it in. That's one of the things that we always pack in our luggage, and most people don't think about that. John says detectors are very accessible. They run from $40 to $150. They have battery backups, but I would definitely suggest that if you're staying in a home that has gas heat, you've never been there before absolutely take one with you. It's it's the best 50 bucks you'll ever spend. And as a father, he wants to be extra cautious. I have a seven-year-old daughter, so I have one that is a combination, and then I have one that is actual standalone. So, um, you know, to me, spending the money on those, I'd rather have much more than what I need than not enough. Carbon monoxide is toxic to all humans and animals, and it comes from any device or appliance that burns fuel. It is dangerous because the gas displaces oxygen in your bloodstream. This can cause you to feel sick and can even re result in death. DHEC says symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning can be a severe headache, sleepiness, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, and fainting. If you feel that you could be suffering from carbon monoxide poisoning, get outside of your home into fresh air and call 911. Live from the newsroom, Calista Brown. Three people are dead after an active duty U.S. sailor opened fire on three civilian employees and took his own life yesterday at Pearl Harbor. It happened just three days before the 78th anniversary of the attack on the famous Hawaiian Navy base. The suspect, a male sailor, was assigned to fast attack submarine USS Columbia, which was at the shipyard for maintenance. An investigation is ongoing with no word yet on a possible motive. Highway Patrol is looking into a deadly single vehicle crash that occurred in Lee County. The accident happened around 8.15 last night. A Chevy Tahoe ran off the road and hit several trees, leaving the drivers dead. Officials are investigating an accident at Holly Hill Cement Plant that left one man dead Tuesday. The Orangeburg County Coroner's Office identified the man as Lennox Hinkson, a contract worker for the Wholesome Cement Plant. Hinkson was pronounced dead on the scene. The cause of the death is not available, but has been ruled an accident. A mental health officer at Lieber Correctional Institution has confessed to smuggling alcohol into jail. Faith Weston is charged with providing contraband to an inmate, criminal conspiracy, and misconduct in office. Officials say Weston disguised the alcohol as water in a water bottle to deliver to an inmate. House lawmakers are moving forward with a historic impeachment process today. That's right. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced this morning that the House Judiciary Committee will begin drafting articles of impeachment against President Donald Trump. Summer Hector is live in the newsroom with the latest. Thank you. Yeah, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says House Democrats will move forward with the next step of the impeachment process. This comes after yesterday's full day of House Judiciary Committee testimony from four constitutional scholars. Pelosi gave no details of what the articles will focus on, but says President Trump's actions could affect the 2020 election if left unchecked by Congress. Our democracy is what is at stake. The president leaves us no choice but to act because he is trying to corrupt once again the election for his own benefit. The president has engaged in abuse of power, undermining our national security and jeopardizing the integrity of our elections. 
If the House Judiciary Committee adopts the articles of impeachment, it will then go to a full House vote. But the committee still might hold another hearing next week. The White House has to decide by tomorrow whether or not it will participate in any future hearings. Live from the newsroom, Summer Hector, back to you in the studio. Well, it might be December, but it's been kind of warm lately. Brandon Weeks is live in the greenhouse to give us our first weather look. Brandon, can we expect the weather to cool down as we get closer to the holidays? Thanks, guys. Well, it is a beautiful day out here today with the temperature sitting right around 60 degrees. And it doesn't quite feel like Christmas weather with the sun shining, but that might not last too long as the snowstorm that's moving across the Midwest makes its way towards the east. I'll have more on that and a five day forecast coming up for you later in the show. But for now, back to y'all in the studio. Thanks, Brandon. This time of year, it's not unusual for you to see kids posing with Santa at the mall, but not all kids are able to attend. Adventure Children's Museum is trying to make it a little bit easier by hosting an event that gives kids with sensory disabilities the opportunity to see Kris Kringle without all the loud music and bright lights. You can catch Santa and his helpers tonight and tomorrow between 5 and 7.30. This morning, women were waiting in lines at the state fairgrounds before 9 a.m. for the opening day of the Junior League Holiday Market. Reporter Katie Freeman says if you're looking to get into the holiday spirit, this is the place to go. Come one, come all, but take a note from Dina and come early. Always come every year to look for one specific vendor. Um, Always a favorite, always buy from. Didn't find them this year, but lots of other great um, vendors to look at and buy from. This is Dina's sixth year attending the Junior League of Columbia's Holiday Market. And the reason she came to the show that first year? I think it's a great cause anyway with the Junior Women's League that, you know, it's, it's getting exposure to what they stand for and their mission statement. So, um, yeah, I, I really like the cause. And a great cause it is, thanks to Junior League women and president of the organization, Bonnie. Um, Holiday Market is our biggest fundraiser, and so we are so grateful for all of our shoppers who come um, because we allow that money allows us to do what we do in the community um, to partner with Richland One School District, to partner with um, tons of nonprofits throughout the Midlands. Every year for the last 34 years, over 12,000 people come to this space to join in for the Junior League of Columbia's Holiday Market. The market is so large that it covers over 75,000 square feet and everyone who enters is given a map so that they're able to navigate all of the booths that come to the show. And vendors like Tiffany, the owner of James and Eloise, she started coming through the encouragement actually of a lot of our customers and it's been amazing. We loved it being here. The only tough part of the show is definitely um, the setup and stressing out about your booth looking cute and looking good and making sure that you are using all of your space. So if you're looking for a way to get in that Christmas spirit or you need to pick up a few more presents, head down to the fairgrounds. But if that isn't reason enough, Santa Claus will be here on Sunday. So um, come any day that for the rest of the week. Um, and get all your holiday shopping done and support a great cause as well. Reporting one last time for Carolina News, I'm Katie Freeman. Well, if you want to check it out for yourself, the market will be open through Sunday and buying an $8 ticket at the door will get you access for every day of the market. And coming up next on Carolina News, a rule change is going to throw hundreds of thousands of people off of the federal SNAP program. The Trump administration is changing the federal SNAP program, formerly known as food stamps. And these changes will eliminate benefits for almost 700,000 people nationwide. Reporter Mike Rogers is live outside the State Department of Social Services with more on the developing story. Mike. Thanks, guys. The new rule is going to affect states' ability to opt out of certain requirements. This graphic shows the old uh, requirements for uh, recipients of SNAP. Previously, uh, people eligible for SNAP out of every three-year span, but states could opt out in counties with high unemployment. However, counties with as little as 2.5% unemployment were waiving it. The new rule raised that waiver bar to at least 6% and eliminate, eliminate benefits for recipients in those counties. The Department of Social Services earlier declined to comment on how the rule change would impact counties in South Carolina. Reporting live from the DSS for Carolina News, Mike Rogers. Back to you, studio. Thanks, Mike. 
All 50 states are now reporting vaping-related illnesses and injuries. The CDC is recommending people not to use e-cigarettes since they are often linked to these injuries. Chair of the House Subcommittee on Economic and Consumer Policy, Raja Krishnamurthy, says it's time for the FDA and White House to step it up. So I suggest you go back to the FDA and you tell them that the American public is up in arms about this youth e-cigarette epidemic. The CDC says they are over, there are currently over 2,000 cases across the country of lung-related illnesses and injuries linked to vaping. Two Columbia High School students are being held in the juvenile wing of the Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center after bringing a loaded weapon onto the school's campus Wednesday. Both students are charged with possession of a stolen weapon, unlawful carrying of a pistol, and carrying a weapon on school campus. Deputies say the students are 15 and 17 years old and skipped school earlier in the day. The South Carolina Attorney General is questioning legality of the two gun ordinances adopted by the City of Columbia on December 2nd. The new ordinance involves allowing officials to remove guns from individuals if they find them in extreme risk, also prohibiting possession, possession of guns within 1,000 feet of a public or private school. The Attorney General Alan Wilson believes that the regulation of firearms within Columbia violates state laws. Shopping for brand new outfits at the mall and online can be fun, but it's not so fun for the environment. Reporter Angela Howell had the opportunity Although to your talk favorite to clothing experts store about why you might want to buy used clothes from thrift stores rather than contribute to the pollution that comes with mass manufacturing of cheap clothes. Although your favorite clothing store having a sale is a great excuse to go out and shop, frequently buying brand new clothes is a fashion trend that needs to go out of style. The fashion and textile industry is the second largest polluter in the world behind the oil industry. That's because the resources needed to make our clothes emit a huge carbon footprint. Pesticides that are sprayed to grow cotton, synthetic materials made from plastic, and toxic chemicals like dyes and bleaches all end up in our ecosystems. Not to mention the energy that's needed for packaging and distribution. Jeff Campbell is a retail professor at the University of South Carolina. Particularly in the United States, a, uh, sometimes we think about, you know, we just need to get something quickly and we want something cheaply. That's why, you know, Amazon and companies like that are doing really well. So we have to think about it from consumerism as far as, you know, are we willing to pay a little bit more for companies to, you know, to source sustainably? And if they do, uh, certainly they need to be rewarded with, with us, you know, purchasing those items. But, but you're always right now, it's, it's a hard fight because you want cheap clothing but you also say that you want to be sustainable and those two things sometimes don't match very well. Buying from sustainable sources that balance environmental, social, and economic impacts is a great way to reduce your carbon footprint. But the best way is to donate to and buy from secondhand stores. Larry Cook is the Director of Sustainability at the University of South Carolina. So it feels great to be able to donate it rather than throw it away but then you have to be willing to shop in those secondary markets for that actually to have an impact on the waste stream. If, if nobody's going to thrift stores to buy the, the used stuff and then it has to be shipped back across the ocean to a developing nation, um, you know, then that increases the carbon footprint rather than, than reducing it. To become more conscious of how you consume, buy better quality clothes and take care of them so they'll last longer, learn how to repair torn fabric, and choose natural and organic fibers that are biodegradable. For Carolina News, I'm Angela Howell. If you'd like to see your favorite companies become more eco-friendly, you can post comments and reviews on their websites pushing for change. Well, we still have Brandon Weeks outside of the Kennedy Greenhouse Studio to give us a little bit of a sneak peek at the weather. Brandon, can we expect the weather to change much in the coming weeks? Yep, you may want to get outside this weekend because it's looking like the massive system that's moving across the country is going to bring with it some nasty weather. And I'll have more on that after the break. 